Hey guys, Jay here, and today I want to come up with a very, very hot topic. This video is going to be about my top 10 builds for Leak Star in 3.25. Well, recently, Talkative Try has uh, released a video on the dramas around the leak starting, you know, kind of build guide videos, and I cannot wait to be a part of it. Last leak, I released the same video for 3.24, and it does receive some kind of backlash comment. The reason was majority, I released the video right before the uh, patch note actually got public by GGG. So the main, the majority of the concern is uh, how do I know those will be good if I didn't even see the patch note yet. Now this time I posted it after the patch note. And for the record, by the way, the top 10 builds that I put on last leak, apparently 9 out of 10 of them actually got either buffed or untouched. Only one got slightly nerfed, which we immediately find the solution to actually make it work again. Which, by the way, is the Caswin start, right? So, this time, I cannot wait to see what kind of reason <laughs> I will... <laughs> you know, the people who, who, who wants to complain about any kind of Leaf Starter build uh, video is going to have this time, right? Anyway, what I can tell you is this is going to be very, very familiar. If you have been like following a lot of the leak starter build slash meta from previous leaks, because the reason why is GG kind of not touching most of the leak starter this leak in the patch, right? Let's get to the content of the video. So first thing first. I want to talk about the key requirement of the builds that I am including in the list here. Let me actually move my head a little bit. Okay, so it's not on the way. I guess uh, my face is not important, right? First of all, it needs to be cheap. That is very obvious. We are in a leak starting scenario. So being cheap is an absolute first requirement. Second, it can at least progress through tier 16 complete the atlas and have potential to scale further uh, i mean this included to non-ubers uh, tier 17 light what i mean light here is you might not be farming a lot of tier 17 modifiers but you can do some of it in order to actually complete the requirement for unlocking an additional map slot or something like that so yeah that is what i mean when i say tier 17 light over here next one does not require any rare uniques. Rare uniques here are uniques that is in like, I would say tier two, tier one, tier zero, maybe tier three, but anyway, if the unique is cheap, we can use it. If there's a lot of those uniques on the market and they're cheap, we can use it. But those builds normally do not require any specific uniques that is gonna make or break the build anyway, right? And Last but not least, it is not nerfed or maybe even buffed. Uh, the wording I got on the screen here is a little bit confusing, but either it is buffed by the patch or it is not nerfed by the patch, if that makes sense, right? This is going to be a not like a specific build with like a POB and other stuff like that. It is just to, to let you guys know the archetype, the type of build that you might you might be interested in, and then from there you can maybe search it on YouTube, it should or like Max Roll. You can easily find build guides for those kind of builds. I believe there are a lot of people who are working on new leak start guides, or even sometimes the old one will still work as well for previous patches like 3.24, 3.23, because there's no changes, right? So, let's get to the actual builds. And there will be 10 of it, right? Number one, Ignite Elementalist. 
Last time I put this one on number one as well. Uh, I think Ignite Elementalist or Ignite build as a whole is a very, very comfortable league starter. This league, we do have kind of some new toys for Ignite Elementalist. And the most obvious and shiny one, I would say, is Perfect Agony. Now we can potentially scale Ignite so much easier. I mean, we do not need to scale it past 35-ish million damage over time because it's the dot cap. I don't think that is going to change. But the point is, it is so much easier to scale to that point which with Perfect Agony at the moment. And uh, my recommendation would be wait for Subtractor to come up with a new Frostblink Elementalist video. I think that is still probably the best playstyle Ignite Elementalist build that I have played and have seen so far. You can also do like even melee Ignite, this patch seems very potent because there's a lot of skills with absolutely huge amount of damage effectiveness on the skill, which also means it can scale Ignite really, really well. And also you can do like Steel Burning Arrow, should be very, very nice because you move to the side of area with Perfect Agony, it is the bow side of the um, passive skill tree anyway. So Ignite Elementalist is going to be very solid. Whatever spell, whatever attacks you decided to use with it, basically. Next, anything Bleed Gladiator. Gladiator rework looks absolutely gorgeous. It will be very, very nice as a League Starter character. Um, I do have some concern about the ability to actually push through all the end game contents like Uber Ubers or, you know, very hard content, very juice content. However, I am certain with all the buffs that is received, numerically speaking, Bleed Gladiators should, should just cruise through the game easily, very, very easily actually not even with a the sweat there there are so many tools for for damage and so many tools for more quality of life basically the build which is any builds with bleed gladiator should feels really really smooth uh, they have explosion built in they have a lot of damage very easy scaling with defense through the new block because uh, the new block ascendancy basically cover the weakness of block before before block can only cap at 75%, right? So 25% of the time, assuming you do not have any additional max block chance, which is very hard to get. Any amount of damage you take 25% of the time, you will still take the full amount of it. So you are somewhat still quite vulnerable to getting one shot. If block is your only defense mechanism however now it's not the case the ascendancy allow you to have lucky block chance lucky block chance is super super strong effectively it is making your block chance pretty much 100 percent sure here and there if you have lucky block chance and 75 percent block you will still take a hit somewhere but at least at least in soft core that is good enough. You don't need to even have any additional layers of defense. You still die sometime, but it's rare enough that it doesn't matter. If you're in hardcore, you should still stack some layers of mitigation anyway. So, yeah. Super, super solid Ascendancy rework. And I think anything Bleed Gladiator at this point is going to be very, very smooth for late start. Next one. Summon Raging Spirit. Completely untouched in the patch, it is still the same as it is last league, and I do think it still is a solid league starter that you can then pivot into different builds, or you can potentially even put push this particular build into the end game. You can use Guardian, you can use uh, obviously Necromancer, if minion, especially if you want to play some kind of Necromancer build. I think Summon Raging Spirit will be a very good starting point for it, right? That is, uh, it has been for a lot of leagues already, so same old, same old. Next, Hex Blast Mine. 
surprisingly did not take any hit, any nerf, uh, any significant nerf this league to the mechanic of Hex Blast Mine. And at gem level 20 and above, you either have the same damage or even more. So, hey, you already seen, you have already seen how strong this build is in the League Star scenario and even after the League Star is still a very, very solid build for bossing, for sanctum, for a lot of, a lot of, a lot of stuff. Right? So Hex Blast Mine is still super, super good. Next one, Toxic Brain Pathfinder. Uh, pretty much untouched by the, path, by, by the patch as well. It's not something exciting. That is probably the only drawback, but it is super, super solid. Still, right? I would say that any previous Toxic Brain Pathfinder build uh, in the previous 2-3 patch, if you see the video for the build back then, it will still apply pretty much the exact same thing for this patch. So... If you want to, if you are comfortable with the Chaos Damage Over Time bow playstyle, Toxic Rain Pathfinder still is very, very solid. Next one, Archmage Hierophant. Again, another one surprisingly did not get any direct nerf. <laughs> uh, yeah, there is a removal of Divine Blessing, but I mean, you can use uh, other kind of blessings as well, so... Hey. Archmage, still super strong. Uh, and this time, by the way, I think it is even stronger than last league for one simple reason. Last league, it is something new. We didn't even know the optimal setup for Archmage. Uh, Archmage. This league, with all the knowledge that the community has built together from last league, we do know which skill, which setup is going to be better for Archmage. For example... Frostbolt of Projection, uh, or Ice Nova of uh, Frostbolt, um, Vortex of Projection, even the uh, Kitavas Thirst with uh, Unearth and Detonate Data Chain Reaction, those are still, and they, 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 they are just, just as strong as before, that is what I mean, right? Detonate Dead got nerfed heavily in terms of the corpse damage. However, in order to utilize it as a skill for Archmage, the corpse explosion doesn't mean anything anyway, right? The main damage is you are having Detonate Dead Chain Reaction dealing a thousand percent damage effectiveness of Archmage. That is the key point that makes it strong, right? So Archmage overall did not get nerfed at all. Still is very strong. Next one, Elemental Hit of the Spectrum Deadeye or Warden. Last league in this slot, it is Lightning Arrow, but Elemental Hit of the Spectrum has showed to be a superior skill overall. Especially, it is much easier to scale the damage early on, and also the damage later on. The ceiling for Elemental Hit of the Spectrum is also much higher than Lightning Arrow, so super solid. If you want to see how it works and follow someone who is like a master at this, I would recommend Snoobe. Look him up. Hey, Snoob. The master. Anyway, next one. Very famous. Righteous Fire the Pox. That is not a... Uh, that's not the name of the skill gem. Pox is a creator who is the Righteous Fire guy. So... You can just Google Righteous Fire Pox and he has a whole website for it. All the information you need on all stages of the game. He already even got a video out talking about Righteous Fire in this league, in this coming league. So, yeah, very easy, easy source of super solid build. I also highly recommend you to do this Righteous Fire as a league starter if you want to eventually pivot into my favorite build, which is the AFK build, Caswin Stunned, Chieftain, or Juggernaut, right? Next, insert melee skill gem. This one, uh, 
Well, with all the buffs to melee, this leak, I think every melee skill gem will be just viable. You can just choose the safe route, the easy route of doing the resolute technique early on, and you will get a such an insanely smooth process of getting through the game, basically. Because I kind of think they somewhat overbuff it a little bit. Just a little bit. The number looks insane. So just play anything. Even the least buff skill, like uh, Bone Shatter. But the reason why it was least buffed compared to other melee skill is because it's already stronger than other melee skill. So right now I think melee is in a very, very good spot. There's no way for me to actually test out before the leak start. However, I will still take the risk and would recommend highly this archetype. Any melee skill, just do uh, Gladiator. Very obvious. You can't even do like Warden. Because Warden, remember, is not a bow uh, ascendancy. Uh, it is an attack ascendancy. An elemental attack. So anything Warden should be kind of solid. Uh, personally, the skills that I, I still feel is still my favorite skill for melee is a volcanic fissure of snake i have played quite a lot with it in the previous two leagues i think it mechanically is still the best melee or melee skill in the game so it can just cruise through the game with all the damage buffs that we have received for melee this week don't worry if you want to start melee even blind i would say just just do it. Don't worry about it. You have way, way more damage than before. That you will just feels really good. Just choose something with a lot of coverage, right? Do not do like uh, some uh, random strike skill with no secondary effect, like a heavy strike. <laughs> it's just an auto attack. No, don't do that. Just, just, just choose a a skill with good AOE, good coverage, and you will be. Great, right? Next, last one. Explodey Chieftain. Now, this is a special one that is very close to my heart. It is technically still, I will still say this is Victor's 003's build. He put out a video from Affliction that is a Chieftain with a... Uh, with a one device setup, right? And uh, it is a cast wind stunt. It is an ignite build that rely on the chieftain explosion. At this point, it is not something new anymore, but with the chieftain explosion stays the same. And um, ignite did not get nerfed in any form. As a Chieftain, you probably cannot scale the new shiny Perfect Agony, however, it is still very, very solid because Chieftain Explosion is super, super strong. 500% of base life damage from Monster. Super strong. The reason why it is going to be extra, uh, extra strong this league is because the comeback of a skill called Penance Mark. It is a skill that was available in Affliction through the Warlock of the Mist. It creates a monster that is an enemy to, all, to us, so we can um, explode it. We kill it, we explode it, that can uh, then deals the damage to whatever bosses we need to have single target on, basically. So that is a much, much better way to deal with a single target for Chieftain ignite as a whole right also there is a slight buff this leak for cast when stunned i would not say it is too significant but for chieftain uh, exclusively one of the method that we have used before to generate monsters to explode on bosses is a vow breach and this time vow breach cannot be interrupted anymore before, the problem we have is the Vow Bridge casting animation is very... 
it takes like two to three seconds to cast the Vow Bridge on a no cast speed character. And so, right now we no longer can get interrupted by any way. If we cast the Vow Bridge, it will finish the Vow Bridge cast animation. So, yeah, potentially if the gem is not expensive, if it is cheap, that is an additional way that we can use also for Chieftain single target. And I personally, for, you know, the viewers of my channel, I would say, you guys probably follow the AFK build. And I can safely say at this point, Chieftain Explosion is going to be the first AFK build or the first build that can AFK farming in the Simulacrum this league. Because what you need to do is just to focus on defense and use the explosion for damage. Sure, sometimes it can be a little bit clunky early on because we do not have enough gear to tank. Uh, I, I mean, not to tank, but we do not have like sufficient gear for basically stronger character. But the bare minimum is there. We just need to have enough tankiness, which we can get through the Chieftain Ascendancy. And uh, yeah, we can get all the damage from the Ascendancy as well. So just be tanky. Get the normal Chieftain tanky AFK setup. Convert as much damage, physical damage taken as fire as possible. Cloak of Flame is your friend, right? This build can even work in like four links previously, by the way. This time, because Detonate Dead is kind of nerfed, we can use just any other skill. Because in order to, to kill a normal monster or a magic or sometimes a rare monster, you don't really need all the ignite damage from like the old Detonate Dead at all. Right? You might just use any ignite skill and you can still kill them. You can also use the tech from uh, Righteous Fire, which uh, is have a fire trap and have some extra burning damage to take down the bosses faster, basically. So yeah, that is it. That is everything I have for this video. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope this time, well, you can find a good list starter for yourself. I myself will actually put out like actual build guide video this is a list this is not a build guide as i've said from the start so anyway if you think this is helpful to you please leave a like and subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for way way more content from now on until the beginning of the league and also after the league is launched this league looks super huge i am a big fan of city builder strategy game and I am somewhat of an addict to uh, <laughs> idol game. <laughs> I have to say that. <laughs> I'm not proud of it, but in my phone, I have quite a lot of idol games at some point in my life, right? And I spent a, a sad amount of money. It's good to see some of those things comes to POV. They even have a tavern. Which technically is like a tavern in a gacha fucking game, right? So, yeah. It's my leak. Probably. Stay tuned for more content. Please remember to like and subscribe again. Thanks for watching and peace.